Ingenuity's first flight proved that an autonomous helicopter could fly in the thin Martian atmosphere. On its tenth flight, it proved its ability to explore the landscape. Tango Delta. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars. Years before Ingenuity flew on Mars, many flight tests were done inside a vacuum chamber with about 1% of Earth's atmospheric pressure. This is the pressure at the surface of Mars, the equivalent of about 100,000 feet up in skies over Earth where no helicopter has ever flown. But that was only half the challenge. Ingenuity would also need to fly completely on its own because of the long delays in radio communication between Earth and Mars. So no joysticking. Here's the final version of Ingenuity seen shortly after it was deployed on Mars, and here's Mars Guy for scale. Two counter-rotating blades are used to keep it from spinning. They're about 4 feet or about 1.2 meters long to provide enough lift in the thin air. You can see the final design of the carbon fiber feet, which show up in all of the images taken with Ingenuity's two cameras. Ingenuity was designed as a technology demonstration, a proof of concept, but its incredible success proved that it was ready for real exploration. The floor of Jezero Crater has many large fractures of uncertain origin. In some cases, erosion leaves behind a parallel set of ridges. One explanation is that mineral-rich water moved through the fractures and armored them, making them more resistant to erosion. Ingenuity was given the task to take a closer look. If they're interesting, Perseverance could then get involved. Here's the flight plan for Ingenuity's first scouting mission. I flipped the scene to orient it in the direction of the images it took. The plan was to scope out the raised ridges from multiple waypoints. Most of them are in pairs to produce stereo images for 3D rendering. Nothing like this was ever planned for Ingenuity during its development. I've tried to recreate the sights and sounds of what this scouting mission was like. The audio comes from the testing chamber on Earth, and the video is from earlier flights. Here's the view of waypoint 2 from about 40 feet or 12 meters up. Note that the helicopter's carbon fiber foot is in all the color images. Also note that Ingenuity's shadow provides a scale bar. It's about 4 feet or 1.2 meters across. Waypoint 3 is the second image in the stereo pair. Switching back and forth between the two shows the separation. Waypoint 4 includes a semicircle of rocks that probably represents a small eroded impact crater. And here's the accompanying image for the stereo pair. Waypoint 6 is the first good look at a fracture and its raised ridges. If the rocks here were mineralized by water, they might show some change in color but it looks like they have the same dust-covered gray appearance as nearby rocks. This location gives a good view of another fracture with parallel ridges extending off into the distance, looking like a garden path. There's also a nice set of relatively fresh impact craters. The biggest one is about 25 feet or 8 meters across. Waypoint 7 provides the perfectly oriented stereo pair for this interesting scene.
Waypoint 8 is the only one without an offset location for a stereo pair. The rocks in the raised ridges at waypoint 9 also don't show obvious evidence of water alteration. Waypoint 10 is the final location for a stereo pair before the turn back toward the landing site. Flying backward, Ingenuity tilted up just enough to get this great context shot of the raised ridges and the distant rim of Jezero Crater. There's also an appearance by the Kodiak Mesa Delta remnant. The precision flying and high quality images provided by Ingenuity on its first reconnaissance flight bode well for future helicopter missions to Mars.